Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the AUD podcast channel. I'm your host Khaled Abul Jubain. We are honored to have Ms. Zaure Rosmat as our guest on the show today. Zaure is the CEO of Kazakhstani media startup The Step, which was founded in 2016. Her goal has always been to focus on education, technology, cultural economics and tourism while avoiding gossip, tabloids and clickbait. The Step was one of the first media outlets to utilize native advertising in Kazakhstan and has successfully partnered with both Kazakhstani and international brands. In this episode, you'll learn the role of social media today, the tension between the young and the old generations, and the importance of voices of a young generation. Please join me in welcoming to the show, Ms. Zaure Rosmat. Um, from being an entrepreneur at a very young age to, you know, growing up in a society that I didn't even realize until I did my research how half the population is under 29 in Kazakhstan, which blew my mind. That seems like s a, such a high number. Mm -hmm. And given the work that you do with STEP um, and what you guys are trying to do and the message and the type of content you guys have um, on the platform, mm -hmm. it's interesting to see how that like companies like yours are the ones who are championing those voices for change and for you know the new generation to take the country to for the next 50 or 100 years but before we get into all these different areas why don't you give all of us a little bit of background about yourself and we'll take it from there oh thank you um well indeed Kazakhstan is quite a young country in terms of like the age and but it's interesting though we do have this culture uh, like no cultural similarities in that sense uh, because elders are always right <laughs> of course and uh, young people weren't hurt I would say and in my case I started my company like very first business it was in when I when I was 23 and then the step was founded actually in 2006 16 I'm sorry mm -hmm. and I was 26 at that time and at the time I was like really thinking why young people are struggling with this fact that even they weren't uh, appreciated in some of the companies and we still have this problem like when no one listens to young people. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking like, I wanna change it and entrepreneurs are those who wanna change it and can change since uh, there was no um, similar project at the time. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, so, my goal was to attract attention to young people, startups at the time, because we had this, you know, like, uh, you have to tell your story, like share it. Mm. And in media, in Forbes, we had at that time, and, and not only, they were just sharing stories about very successful entrepreneurs and business people. And I was questioning, okay, uh, where should I take this example or motivation, right? So I wanted to see and read similar stories like me from similar people like my age. So um, that was the initial idea and the reason why I started the step. Mm. And still the steps audience is quite young. Okay. We keep this actually tradition because I, I think in any business, not only media is quite interesting that your audience grows with you, with your brand. But you still have to um, make it young so that you will have this loyal people growing with you through sure. the time. Yeah. So to make sure you have that, so your message is hitting the right people. Yep. Uh, in that, no, I mean, I mean, my point was, is that young people uh, are quite shapeable <laughs> okay, and you can change their in minds in a good yeah. way. Yeah. And you have to target in any business, not only media. Yeah, that's, you know, that's very true. And we were talking a little bit earlier about how I was thinking with your story and you started your own business very young and then having to grow that business and hire people and hire people that might be, you know, older than you as well. And you said there is that tension, there's that discrepancy between, um, you know, the old and the young. So I was curious for you in your story, how you dealt with that, because you're coming at it as a business owner. Um, but there are others who maybe are just employees that might struggle with the same thing. They might be in a higher position than someone uh, older than them. And even they don't know how to navigate those kind of relationships. So what can we tell us what happened in your example and how what could we take away from that? 
um, there is no, um, I would say, secret that we are like, especially in our countries like Kazakhstan, Arab countries, we do have this thing as we have mentioned before. Yeah. Um, but you have to deserve this respect, right? You have to fair, prove fair, true, to your true, parent, then true. to your uh, employer that you deserve better salary, better conditions. Um, well, I mean, I still, I, I would say that I'm still struggling in, in the way that when I hire elder, like people elder than me, they would think that they have better experience or understanding of the business. Mm -hmm which is quite true at some point. It depends on the experience, right? But when we take some, you know, fields like media, it's quite young uh, field, let's say social networks. And of course, TikTokers are younger even than me. Yeah. And, you know, I hire specialists, I would face with very young people. But the key here is that I should trust them. And same thing when you have this elder, let's say manager that you hired and he had great experience. You have to build this trust among each other, mm -hmm. saying that, okay, maybe I'm right in, you know, accounting, let's say, or you have better experience. It depends on the field, right? Yeah. Um, so you should trust this um, manager. In in my case, since I'm younger most of the time, or you should actually, in my team, like people are younger than me, even <laughs> like the, the average age of my employees are, like 21 to that's the average oh wow yeah and and then i never underestimate their abilities mm. because i treat them equally and then i understand that they know better and even as i said you know like how to distribute content through the social networks like instagram tiktok whatever so the, in my case i uh, i'm trying to change my mindset as well in saying that i know everything yeah because I'm wrong in that sense. Uh, but when I trust them, I can see results. Let's say we have this KPIs and targets on uh, what we have to do so far. And when I see the result, I, I, I was like, okay, fine. Now I'm silent yeah, in yeah. sense. But uh, when, when it comes to hiring um, experienced top manager, uh, I've once have read, I think uh, um, in a book, How Google Works, um, he was sharing his experience saying that sometimes experienced experience top management can hurt top manager can hurt your company because he doesn't really understand the philosophy and the concept of your business mm. so um, it's i think it's uh, always a struggle and <laughs> kind of a war mm. between uh, between uh, your team and among but you have to build this trust i mean i don't have any key thing saying that yeah depends on a field yeah, this, I think the field is important. Um, but one thing you said that I think is very important to remember is the trust part. You know, you are working with this person who has experience in a certain way. You should trust that experience at least. You have to accept and acknowledge in, mm -hmm. uh, that you don't know everything. Yeah. And if you want to succeed, let's say, um, in my case, media, uh, you have to know the trend and trust trends mm -hmm. and usually youngsters they know better in that sense and they feel it or you have to change yourself always as a manager you have to be on track you have to be you know like a very curious person in mm -hmm. that sense otherwise you will miss those trends and then you will feel and you know you'll struggle a lot yeah no for sure and i think like you said the younger generation is probably better at picking up a trend or in a lot of cases, even setting them sometimes, mm -hmm. that's where they start. Um, but I will always hear, oh, what do they know? Yeah, what do you they know? You know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I've lived for 50 years and you know nothing. Oh, yeah. It's 50-50. I mean, it's never, uh, it's not always the truth, right? In, yeah. in a way that, okay, you have experience, which is okay. How can you implement your experience in my business, in my brand, in my concept? If my brand is like targeted to young people, you have to think about whom to hire for yeah. that, right? Uh, and in the opposite, like if uh, your target audience is like 40 plus, so then you have to understand what these people they need so it's just a matter of understanding your um, target audience yeah and like you said the right people have to fit within the right project mm -hmm. you have to get the right people for example in your case which is a youth driven brand to target youth who understand that those kinds of trends and stuff like that and there's 
maybe other situations where you need no someone actually younger because they un- they have the skill set more readily available to start you know doing all the social stuff that mm-hmm. you know we see today so when it comes to social media now i know you guys are a media outlet for youth and for youth news and so on what where do you see as the role of social media nowadays is it is it very important to have that digital presence across all channels so i should be able to be in, get in touch with you or find you on whether it's on tiktok on instagram i should be able to find you any everywhere what do you think uh well again um it depends on your product let's say okay uh and in our case we're media right mm-hmm. so we have to uh, understand we do hesitate sometimes to you know, open channels on uh, YouTube, whatever. So it's sometimes you don't want to do that. Uh, but in our case, um, when we talk about even TikTok, right? Um, even though I'm a parent myself, most of the time I'm against of social networks, but I do understand that, okay, so we do have people there. It's completely different. The, the, the audience differs from, you know, those who are reading our website, let's mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. So we have to create for them something. So we want to distribute our news. And I understand that what we do publish on a website comp- is it should be different from social networks. Mm-hmm. So every it should be unique content created based on the understanding of who are they mm. on a TikTok, Instagram, and et cetera, like Twitter. So um, in my humble opinion or biased opinion, if you want to do successful business, you have to be present everywhere. But it's it's quite expensive though to create content um, related to one platform. Let's say TikTok, Instagram, and a website. I'm sorry for just mentioning those net- social networks, but yeah. I have to under uh, explain that creating unique content there is quite important. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, uh, the strategy, the communication strategy, will fail. Uh, but creating unique content, uh, it's hard, and it's time consuming, right? Yeah. So uh, not every brand has this opportunity to, to, you know, have this market, a huge marketing department where you can hire different people targeted to different social networks. So it, uh, prioritize, it's just by advice. If you sell, let's say FMCG products, then you have to know whom you are targeting. If young people, then it should be Instagram probably and TikTok. Right? Yeah. If you are targeting, uh, let's say, um, middle-aged people and you have to do podcasts or so, so it depends. But in our case, we decided to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Let's say we want to target you and we want you to read us. So we're basically grabbing your attention from any other platform. Yeah. And we want you to see our news, right? Mm -hmm. So in that case, we have to be everywhere. So... We were calculating recently with the team, like uh, what is the uh, engagement Mm -hmm. and and our distribution network. So we've counted around like three, four, four, five million uh, engagements around our like social networks. So that's the presence of our brand everywhere. Wow. uh, And if any startup founder would ask me, uh, is it a good thing to be present? I would say yes, definitely, because it helps you to build your brand awareness. Yeah. Uh, even if you are not a very active user, you have to be present because you want people to see your brand. Mm. Um, and your probably client or consumer will be there. Yeah. And I'll, I like what you said. It's um, being present everywhere even if you're not very active, it adds like that um, element of credibility. Yeah. So if I go, I can find you on YouTube. I can find you on Instagram. I can find you. On, even if you're oh, not very active, true. if I can find you everywhere, I'm like, ah, okay. The puzzle is complete. Yeah. It looks complete. This is how it should feel. This is how it should look as a potential customer. Um, well, actually, good points regarding the credibility thing. Uh, because uh, me, myself, did you know that uh, young people, they don't use Google? They don't use Google? Yeah, they use search in TikTok to find things mm-hmm. under hashtag. No really? joke. Wow. Even my friend. More than search? Like, or, or it's coming using up there. They TikTok yeah. as a search engine. Uh, I mean, and I was really surprised with that. So basically, they're using hashtags 
and when they want to find a place, I mean, I don't know, the beauty product. So they're using TikTok. So that means if you're not there, your brand is not there and it doesn't exist. True. So it's funny though. Um, and even LinkedIn, I mean, you have to have it, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah because sure. in not in any country, I mean, I mean, in my country, LinkedIn is popular, but not that much. When you go to Singapore, it's, you know, it's just main, let's say, social network that they're using. So it's quite different. But in what I'm trying to say is that you have to think about even though your team will fight with you. <laughs> like in my case, when I was telling that we should create content on TikTok, they were like, oh, well, we're, Instagram is fine. What would we care about, you know, the young platform? And oh, by the way, and one of the secrets that I want to share with you guys, when new social platform is there, just try to be the first who, are, who is creating ac accounts there, the brand there. It will be easier for you to have bigger audience through the time. Interesting. Yeah, because uh, once you're first, like first, like innovators, they yeah. get everything. So yeah, yeah, I mean, when you open an account on TikTok, like, look, like let's say a year ago, if you would have opened your account, you would be very popular because they help the algorithms, they help you to be popular. Yeah. Same with any product beauty brand. Yeah. It's interesting how all these platforms work. They do this, they want the same thing. Keep using me and stay on here as much as possible and I will reward you with, you know, more views, more engagement, more, a bigger, you know, audience. But Halid, in my case, I treat it, to be honest, in a good way. Okay. Because I know that many startups, they were born in social networks. So let's say Instagram pages, TikTok accounts. And it's a good trend, actually, because it's getting very expensive. Uh, in The LTV is high and, mm. you know, uh, it's it gets very expensive to attract new customers through even Facebook, um, Google. Uh, so in that sense, I would say young platforms, they're giving you opportunities and it's like a social lift to many people that didn't have any, let's say, opportunity to be successful. Yeah. Now, yeah, that's an interesting way to look at it, um, how social media now, to be fair, does kind of level, level out the playing field in the sense that now, as long as if you're known... I was talking to someone about this other day. I'm like, you don't have, nowadays, to be successful, you don't necessarily have to be very good. You just have to be very well known. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that, that that's the situation now because it almost shouldn't be allowed in that sense. You should be very good and be known for being that good at something. But now if you can just grab attention um, in the right way, it can open a lot of doors for you that you would have never had uh, potentially before. But I would disagree in that sense. Okay. Uh, only long-term quality is mm. what matters. I mean, sure. I mean, okay. I'm for quality vs quantity. Mm. But that's true. Uh, if, let's say, if you are popular, it's easier for you to sell the product. Yeah. But if you are popular and you are selling bad product, mm. your popularity will, you know, just true. Uh, um, blow i mean will be blown away and and it's hard to get this as you said before credibility mm. and so i mean quality is what matters but you can use your um any platform let's say even media just to popularize your brand startups and it it will help you it will no for sure it definitely will and i wanted to bring it on to bring this conversation on to your Sorry, we're just too far. To I know, I know. <laughs> but but usually, we can't come back. Yeah. But usually, when we go the, down those, you know, those tangents, it's always fun, yeah. and there's always usually some good uh, information there. So, I have no problem. Um, but bring it back. Um, I wanted to talk about how your early days in uh, being an entrepreneur. Okay. Um, first of all, is that something you always wanted? Like you know, some people, there's people who have always look to themselves as career people and they love that's what they like and they want to be successful with that and then there's other people who you speak to them who have started businesses and they'll tell you like since i was a kid like i had this idea like i always had this this something that always existed so where did 
that come from for you? Um, I'm 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 always sharing my stories in in a, in, a, in a funny way, uh, saying that no one hired me, <laughs> but um, in when I used to study at AUD and uh, other universities, I remember that everyone wanted to work at KPMG, Price Waterhouse, mm -hmm. and uh, the Procter and Gamble, and I I've never understood it, but I was I was always keen on marketing and creating some great campaigns, brands, and I always liked it. And I actually took, the, my major was marketing and management. Um, and it's still actually very, I would say, uh, helping me. Mm. Uh, uh, and I would say it's a very rare uh, major that is still actually very demanded. Mm, very, right? yeah. yeah. Because being a finances is go good, but it's not that interesting anymore. Uh, in, Again, it's just my opinion, but um, yes, I always wanted to earn money. Uh, I always knew that um, it gives you freedom. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be, let's say, a boss. Mm -hmm. Now they they call it leader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to, you know, lead. And I actually remember our like, uh, uh, let's say, teamwork. Mm -hmm. You had to lead your team in at the university, and I will. I always uh, was the one who initiates things, that creates ideas, and then the whole team works. Mm. But it took took me some time to work with people. It's another skill. It's yeah. a soft skill that you should actually develop. But at that time, I just knew that I want to. Okay, so I saw a niche. Let's say uh, you see Dubai is like very developed in a way that uh, you have everything here. But long time ago, like 20 years ago, yeah, there, were. there were a lot of opportunities in just opening cafes, startups, whatever. It now very highly competitive. But when you come back, I'm from Kazakhstan, right? When you come back to your country, you see opportunities and you just can open something, right? So I knew that, okay, I see some niche, it's free. Uh, and I really like, let's say, New York Times, Washington Post and other projects. And what, why I can't create something like this for my market? And it, I think it's still, it's a good strategy to do some marketing research to see what is there and how you can improve. It doesn't necessarily mean you're the, the one, the first one, like, like yes. Elon Musk, yes. right? You yeah. are not, you, should, you couldn't be a genius. Like uh, we have this joke, like don't think you will create Facebook. Or Google. <laughs> Just use Google and Facebook yeah. for creating something real. <laughs> sure. uh, and in that sense, you have to be very down to earth and see what are the opportunities. In the long run, you can change, adapt, innovate in your business. But at the time, my strategy, strategy was just to open the business that will work, bring me my money. Because I'm a single mom, I was there. I mean, at that time I wanted to feed you know, my kid. It's just very common thing to many women. Uh, but yeah, um, now I understand that this is what makes me happy to change society through mm. my projects. Mm -hmm. So I have the social impact. Mm. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it brings me a lot of money. It's not, you know, just having a bank or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, selling even, uh, I always love like saying that selling burgers is much more, <laughs> um, uh, success, I mean, it's much more profitable, but having media is having this power yeah. um, to change something, to bring young voices and give them you know, this uh, freedom yeah, uh, and give them opportunity to uh, influence our society. So uh, that's why I'm happy, uh, but I'm not sure if I was a manager somewhere, even though if I had this, you know, a good salary, I wouldn't have this uh, opportunity to, to change. Yeah, <clears throat> it's more about, it sounds more about the, the impact that you want to have on a bigger scale than the actual job itself. Yeah. yeah. And do you, do you feel like nowadays a lot of companies or brands have a more social cause to them as well? They'll be like, oh, for every t-shirt you buy, they, a child gets a book they, to read they, they, or they some, can, yeah. having that aspect, that social co impact aspect seems to be something that it resonates a lot, particularly with younger generations which I find very interesting. And you know, what do you think the reason is? 
When I was actually coming to your podcast, I was, uh, you know, using chat to petite, yeah. see what are the trends. And <laughs> sure. one of this is uh, the what, social responsibility that you're mm. just mentioning. Uh, in fact, I like this thing. It means that we, uh, like for entrepreneurs, let's say I'm creating a beauty product and then I have to consider it's challenge. I have to consider what is my philosophy and what I, and how can I market my let's say creep, body creep. And then on the other side, there are like my consumers. And I know that if I know their values, it will be easier for me to target them, mm. if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So from, let's say, very practical thing, from marketing point of view, it's a good thing. For uh, people, youngsters, as you said, young people that actually want to be related to the brand, like yes. if the, even Steve Jobs was saying this, like I, Apple, iPhone, my phone, like this is the same thing. So young people would now divide brands based if they like it, if the brand has the social responsibilities um, among our society, et cetera, et cetera. I find it very interesting and I find it even easier for brands to distribute their products, to sell the products mm. to the right people. It's a like at some point segmented, yeah, uh, which is good. Yeah, uh, but many of us we know that most of the time it's just a marketing. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you know a good way to sell the product. Yeah, which is um, we should be very let's say fair in that yeah. sense. Yeah, but again, it's just your choice, right? It's just you are the one who takes the decision, and you know. Yeah, it's. I guess it is. It's kind of a consumer's fault that they. A lot of companies now want to do that is because they saw all of us being like, oh, we like that. You mm -hmm. know, when it has that like green badge, love it. <laughs> I'll buy it. Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> so then they're like, okay, oh, you like that? Then we're going to put it on everything. And then, so yeah. They call it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it, it is called greenwashing. Yes, yes, it is. So it's just, again, it's just pe human beings themselves. They raise this demand and yeah. there is supply, right? Yeah. Sure. But again, um, when it comes to, let's say, uh, us in my business um i want to create something in a way i mean we do have a lot of social influence impact and projects but again uh we as a brand uh, we want to share those values and we want this huge community supporting us yeah which is quite good for the business i would say one of the things besides the social impact uh, the trends, the di digita di digitalization, <laughs> etc. There is one of the things that we should consider is that, um, and um, uh, the, I forgot my, uh, I forgot what I would say. That one of the trends, uh, besides social impact, is that uh, oh, you want to build a community. Mm. So one of the things that you should brands are working on now like Uber and other companies, they actually want, uh, they are working a lot on their community. Because as I said, price per like click is getting more expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for you to engage the existing customers, yeah. and sell them more products and which is fine, I think. And community is the key now. Mm. Yeah, because I don't necessarily, yeah, of course, the bigger the audience, the better. But now if I can, if I had a dedicated, not very large group, but like a good sized group of dedicated customers, I don't need any new customers because I have this, you know, to continuously sell through through to them because they already love my product and my brand. I don't have to work to How convince you, them. Yeah, to convince them. Yeah. Uh, but um, probably it's a very niche thing mm, at yeah. some point, yeah, yeah. which is fine. Niche uh, products are more expensive and the more valued, I would say, as yeah, you said, true. the community, if they appreciate your products, they will be waiting for your new products, but it's hard. It's hard to actually sustain and maintain it. Yeah. Some brands I think are better at doing it than others, but they, that work on very limited, you know, releases or limited edition supplies. Supreme is known famously for doing these kind of oh, things. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I wanted to bring it back to, um, kind of a lot of things, um, a main thing that's popped up in our conversation, which is the voice of the youth. And that's kind of what you guys champion at STEP. So first of all, why don't you tell all of us about the STEP? What is it? What's its mission? What are you guys, 
what are you hoping to achieve with it? And number two, why do you think nowadays the voices of like the younger generations are crucial to make that, you know, impact? Why is it, why should we be now more than ever listening to the younger guys? Maybe more than we even we previously have, you know, in the past. Okay, so we start from the beginning. Um, the Step is a distributed media company founded in 2016 by me uh, and my team. Um, it was, uh, at that time, uh, social networks weren't active as much. So there was Instagram, Facebook, but uh, the main focus was w website. And in my case, main focus was to build not just a media company, but a brand that mm. actually in the longer run will create this even communities mm. and events and not only. Uh, so the step was uh, always young in a way that we're hiring young people, we are supporting young people, and we're actually telling their stories to a bigger audience. Okay. Why it was important since our country, as I said before, is quite young, uh, relatively in, in the way that the average age, as you have mentioned, is 29, 25. That means that actually young people run the country. And uh, one of the things that and examples, let's say, if you are taking into account, let's say, countries like Japan, their problem is that they want young people to be heard. But it's quite, quite difficult for them now to do that. Yeah. Young people, they actually run the economy of the country. And if you look at this aspect, it was the right decision for me to target them. Mm. For now, um, again, as I said before, there are a lot of opportunities. And every young people and every person is a creator, let's say, creating you know, any agenda on their social networks, uh, pages, uh, blogs, uh, and not only. But STEP is important because uh, STEP is actually structurizing all of those things. Let's, structurizing. Yeah. Let's say um, we do actually, as a, as a media company, as a journalist, we are responsible for information that we are sharing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we kind of are structurizing this, you know, young uh, community. Sure. Let's say we do have this, you know, fact checking thing. We do have uh, this responsibility in a way that our metholo methodology on how we share stories and tell the stories. And it was built through the time. Okay. And of course, if now we're facing the world is changing and we're facing this, you know, fake news thing. And it's hard very hard to actually control all of those things. And Elon Musk actually is creating this AI uh, for uh, the, the new open AI version of uh, GPT. Uh, he wants to control and take uh, get rid of fake news, which is a challenging thing because we're always struggling with that. But again, as I said, we are as a team actually giving the voices, but again, we're checking it. We're just trying to navigate Mm. We are not trying to control young people, but mm -hmm. we try to give them, you know, more understanding of what's happening in the world. And um, so basically when you, when people ask me who is a steps reader, I'm telling that it's a progressive person. It's a person who is interested and curious about the world. And it's a person who wants to wake up and not just consume negative news which is all around, right? Very like true. You open Instagram when you will wake up and you will see some really trashy news. And in our case, we are not sharing yellow pages stories. Mm -hmm. However, in a way that uh, in terms of engagement, it's a good thing. Yep. Like you have yep. bigger numbers, bigger uh, companies that would like to target our audience. But for us, it's very important to keep this, you know, like quality and to give alternative view on yeah. how young people think because if you look at our parents they would say oh well i mean as we have mentioned and laughed on it it's just kind of it sounds like a joke but it's a it's a trouble because young people they have good ideas right mm -hmm. why not to listen to them mm -hmm. at least no one's saying you have to implement it yeah but at least you have to listen to them and I really like uh, this thing that uh, young people are more, in my opinion, again, they are proactive than even us, even my generation. 
they are not afraid, they want to change, they have this um, tools, to, they have their phones, they could be reporters, whoever. Yeah. But as I said, they have to know that they have the support from, you know, like media companies as a step as well. Yeah. Uh, and they feel like, okay, so step is backing up us. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, and you know what happened actually, I, I want to actually mention it through the time when I just started this business, there were a lot of newsrooms, okay. huge ones. Okay. And they are very successful and how, how much they earn, what are their audience. And, but when I started this business, they were like, who are those young people? Mm -hmm. They were just ignoring us. Most of the times, good thing is they were ignoring us. Bad thing, they were criticizing us. They were just, you know, being as a parent, like, oh, show us what you can do. Yeah, yeah. So I had to prove with my team that we could be heard. Yeah. And it took me a while. First, they didn't consider me as the competitors at all. They weren't like uh, thinking that we will grab some budgets from FMCG companies even. They were thinking, oh, show us. And then later on, it changed because many brands, they started working with us. Mm. They were, because they wanted to target this audience, right? Uh, then uh, they believed us because we were more creative, more, uh, there was a fresh view on things that were on the market. And then those newsrooms started actually, you know, hating us, <laughs> which is quite, I understand their feelings. Sure. But, it, but then again, if you want to be on track as a business, you have to change yourself. And if you see your competitor is quite young, creative, you have to be creative as well. Mm. Not just hesitate, just, you know, be friendly, be very, I would say, flexible in that sense. Yeah. So we've changed the market. Another thing that we have changed, and I would suggest everyone to do that in a way that listening young people, is that we started sharing startup stories. Mm -hmm. And again, before you know, the venture capitalists, they don't want to give money to young people. They have this, uh, let's say, age uh, biased uh, really? thing. Yeah, I mean, it's still there, mm -hmm. and it, especially in our countries, right? So uh, they were like, okay, wh wh I mean, what we can do, uh, th what they can do, and what are the projects, they, can they count money? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then we changed, so we gave the credibility to some of the startups. So through our articles, they raised and um, and uh, actually attracted some money from some venture funds. Oh, wow. Because venture funds, they were double checking information about, you know, startups. So Step was a pioneer in that sense. And again, it's just about as we, oh, I mean, were discussing last hour is that, um, you have to trust young people because they, they're changing the, your economy. Mm, yeah, that's, you know, and you know, when I realized that is now if even I look my, from our generation, for example, to my younger sister, who is, you know, now 18, you know, just, just, uh, and like, for example, TikTok. Okay. Do you I struggle using it. <laughs> I don't, I don't struggle. I wouldn't say I struggle using it. I just compared to what she could do, what would take me f maybe five hours to do in terms of edit and change and that <laughs> she could probably do on the fly, you know, as she's recording and doing something else. And it's funny how, um, when you said they're the economy, because the, this is what your future is going to be like. These guys are the guys that are learning all the skills, most relevant skills for today. You just have to accept it. I, <laughs> and I think that, and I think that's, that's one of the challenges. Yeah, but uh, I know as yeah. it's, it's a, a very good, um, I would say, a very, uh, ob I mean, common thing when people don't want to change, mm. which is fine. Even sure. us, yeah, yeah. in me, I was like, why would you would be using TikTok? But then I was like, okay, I have to change myself, my attitude. And then we started doing it and we were quite successful there. So we have million views on, you know, the, some of the videos and which is good for us. Um, uh, but w uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, it's, if you want to ch uh, be uh, on track, as I said before, you have to accept trends and fit them. Mm. Try to fit there. Yeah. 
Otherwise, you just miss it. How mm-hmm. many brands we know that they just missed some trends? Nokia is one of the examples, right? Yeah, big one, yeah. Uh, and many others. So uh, it's a marketing thing. Always do research. Yeah. And like you said, um, naturally you don't want to change because... It's, it's a human being thing. It is, and especially I think when you start a business and once, you know, like something like you've done, then it's working out and and everything's going well, you start thinking, I've worked so hard just to get this one idea and now you're telling me like, don't listen to it and <laughs> don't listen to it and you have to change it. It is, it, I get how it can be hard sometimes. I call it Shiva world now. Uh, it, sh- it used to be, um, there There are some, uh, let's say, uh, uh, how you call it, the words on calling, uh, the, the world now is like Shiva world. Uh, okay. What, what it means is that you have to be not only flexible, but very quick. Mm. Uh, in, yeah. in that sense, uh, the problem with our parents even, they think that their experience, the ages, they, it means something like experience, but now some of the things, or uh, let's say, uh, they're not even uh, valued, I would say. Mm-hmm. Let's say even journalists. Listen, chat GPT changed this a lot. <laughs> and I was like telling my employees, like, guys, if you are not going to use it and be friendly with chat GPT, <laughs> let's say, uh, I wouldn't need you yeah. in the future. So that means that for many years, even though, you know, some of them would be offended with the fact that we would say, we don't need you anymore. But then again, ages mean, mean nothing. Your adaptability. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. Uh, especially with AI now. And um, in that sense, again, my, my mom is using chat GPT now. <laughs> That's awesome. And that, um, she couldn't handle and she couldn't actually work in Excel before. And now what she's doing, chat GPT is helping her <laughs> to create Excel. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. And the good thing about it is that she doesn't hesitate to use it. Mm. So that's the adaptability. You have to. Yeah, you do. You, uh, you do have to. And if you don't keep up with the trends, you will. For example, by. oh, by the way, one of the topics would be interesting to listeners is that when it comes to, let's say, work and some of the brands and uh, companies that are very, let's say, professional, they have this huge experience, big clients, they would hesitate to use social networks most of the time. I would definitely say to them that's a big mistake. If you want to age with your clients who are like 40 plus, then it's fine or 50. Even my mom is using now, let's say, TikTok and Instagram. However, she's like 50 plus, right? Mm-hmm. She's there. So yeah. that means that your business has to be present in the young platforms as well, even though you don't like it, as we have discussed before as well. So the problem is that uh, you have to change your mindset, otherwise you'll fail. Yeah. And in my case, as a founder, I always struggle uh, struggle myself. I always challenge myself in the way that I don't want to use it, but I have to try it at least. At least, yeah. To Not to keep yourself, I think, to keep yourself informed, you know, you have to do that. And uh, I know you've previously also said, speaking about mindset, I just wanted to touch on this aspect um, in the sense that it's not hard to be successful. It all comes down to the mentality. Your mentality will is going to have a massive influence on whether, you know, things go great or things don't. So what advice would you have? Because I'm sure in your the whole in the journey with uh, the step, I'm sure there were times you hit a certain ceiling. level, yeah, a ceiling, a level, and either you're going to cruise this way and go down or are we going to break through and go to this next? And you're always going to find a new ceiling. There's always a new ceiling. There always is. But what advice, given maybe something you learned in your experience, would you have to someone who is feels like they've reached the ceiling, ce- a ceiling and now how, how can I go forward? It's always painful. Um, especially when I, I always tell that there should be more coaches uh, and uh, psychologists <laughs> for, especially for startup founders. Yeah, yeah I can it's imagine. Super exhausting and mm. to run business, to be honest. And even though some of them they would say, no, it's easy, it's fun, but at the same time there is another side when you struggle and mentally as well. So those ceilings that you were telling me now, it's just it's, uh, they are very painful. 
And understanding that you have this, let's say, limit, it's always like acknowledging is it's also, it, it's not a very good thing. Mm, it's not easy to say. Yeah. And uh, accepting this fact as well. So, um, yes, indeed, uh, I think in that sense, since we're at the university, I would say I treat, uh, um, let's say, education uh, in a very good way because they would ask me, oh, by the way, and like even, sorry, just, you know, off top, but when they ask me, students, they are asking me if they have to study at university <laughs> or because it's easier now to, you know, to run business even when you are young without any degree. But I would say definitely to do that because you have to give your brain some food mm. and to consume and have this experience, community, mm. et cetera, et cetera. But MBA, if, let's say, if we're talking about MBA, I think it's one of the things that will help mm. people to just, you know, just slow down and you know just recharge your yeah. mind yeah. in my case education is one of the things that helps me to um, break this mm -hmm. ceiling let's yeah. say travel is is one of the things that helps me let's say if you're running the startup in one field you have to find another founder at linkedin let's say and meet him or talk to him because usually uh, peers they have better understanding on what's going on, mm. uh, especially in my field. Let's say media is quite uh, popular, but at the same time, it's a very specific niche, and not um, uh, not everyone can actually give me suggestions on uh, what to do, how to hire journalists, mm. and mm. how to fire them. Let's say so, uh, and you feel very lonely in that sense. So w one of the things I would suggest. To be honest, it's just share your experience with people who are actually in the field or could be very close to that. Otherwise, you could can get crazy sometimes when it comes to uh, making decisions and coming up to another level. Yeah. Let's say. Yeah. And also the third thing I would say, uh, besides travel and education, that will help you to change your maybe your attitude to some things, uh, work with your brain. Uh, because working, understanding how your brain actually works mm -hmm. and what are the mental things that block you from, let's say, even big money. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, one of the yeah. things that actually blocks us is like having big money. We want them, but we don't, we, we're probably afraid of them. Mm. Uh, and this is another aspect. <laughs> And of course, they would suggest you to go to psychologist, to sure. to neuro. Yeah. But in my case, I would say I'm working with my. Um, so I have this like sessions about neuro science, so science, and then it helps me just to understand how my world brain works in different kind of situation. Even earning money or bringing a uh, coming to another level is what should I do and how I should program. Uh, like program, what is like how how uh, what, what what is the word? Okay, so how should I set up my train uh, train my yeah. brain so yeah. that I can come to another level? There are, of course there are very uh, common things like mentality, which is obviously when you are stuck into your society mm. and when you are in your comfort zone, most of the times what we, you you will face criticism. Uh, or when you there's a, they they call it crab basket when you want to get out of this uh, level, other people would hold you saying why would you need this how what would you do yeah, podcast yeah. Yeah. don't do that mm -hmm. you just you know you have to other you have other responsibilities and in that case you have to fight back yeah. your abuse uh, and what you want to do actually yeah. and never hold your back yeah. Um, so mentality is one of the things that we should always change in, in a good way. Yeah. For women, especially as uh, one of the, my favorite topics and, uh, I'm a feminist myself, but it's one of the things that holds us back. If you look at, uh, those graduates and alumni that, uh, the, the percentage of successful women, uh, even in my country is not that big that's why i'm kind of a role model for young women mm -hmm. because i i handle it handle it mm -hmm. mentally physically and not only but one of i think men also face those problems in terms of like 
let's say if you are having small business when you want to expand it people will stop you from yeah for sure and you have to know how to fight with fight i'm sorry i'm being very spiritual in that sense and 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 i think those are important key yeah. things for even business expansion yeah when they say why would your product be there they don't need it but you have to try it yeah you have to have this hypothesis test them and mm. then do something there yeah no for sure um i think you always have to be testing you always have to be figuring out what's working what mm -hmm. doesn't um and never be afraid and uh, yeah i think that's i think that's another thing um we i think a lot of businesses and companies get to eventually with time get too wrapped up in the financials of it all that you lose track of the the impact that you initially started this for um and also i think it clouds your judgment on what might be the best thing is this the best thing for the brand overall or is this the best thing to make more money right now and those kind of decisions is where you know those are the kind of decisions that are could be the ceilings for you but i think the advice that you gave to speak to someone else who is going through something like that because they're going to understand exactly what you're talking about could be very very helpful um and yeah just if you don't try you're not you'll never know mm -hmm. you'll never know you really won't one of the projects that i was thinking about is mm -hmm. uh, to create uh it was a peer-to-peer -peer coaching let's okay. say i am a vice president of a big corporation and i can talk to the same level person uh, from any other country mm -mm. Oh, on so that we, level yeah okay oh, level. interesting okay. so that we can share our you know pains mm -hmm. uh, problems mm -hmm. and pain points in business and yeah. problems and we can have this mental support to each other which is quite very important and i think there is no project like this so far <laughs> However, they say you can, you can use LinkedIn. And I'm yeah. like, why would this person talk to me if that person is busy, right? But mm -hmm. where you do have this, let's say, Tinder, yeah. for, <laughs> Tinder um, for LinkedIn. support for business people. And yeah. I think it will be very helpful because we, I think, Khalid, and especially in our cultures, we do underestimate what we feel most of the yeah. times. Uh, and, yeah. and now it's changing, of course, which is good. Which is very good, very good. But uh, before, like I definitely, I would say, I would say business people, they're the most talented people because they're having this uh, through the MBA lifetime, lifetime MBA, because they're always having something new, struggling, changing, they're yeah. going through crises, uh, they're failing, they're losing and uh, you have to have this mental support in that cases. You do. And especially for those tough times, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs will say, even the most famous ones will be like, even though they weren't necessarily experts, as long as you, you need to have some type of support group, friends, family, whatever, colleagues, whoever that is for you, just even in the good and the bad times to help you, you know, yeah. get through it all because... Like you said, it can be very lonely, even in my experience with what I do. So I'm the I'm the business basically. Mm -hmm. So I work as a consultant. So in my head, I was like, oh, since it's just me and like I'm not looking to hire anyone, at least not yet, um, it'll be easier mm -hmm. um, than being you know an entrepreneur and doing something like you're doing, which is like to hire and build and make it bigger than that. And I I realized even in my experience, I'm like, oh, it's just as hard in a different way. It's like a different way that this is more difficult, you know, than that. There's no, e I thought I'm like, I would try to go the easy route. I'm like, oh, it wasn't easy. Okay, so there isn't any. Um, but one thing that we tried to do um, with this podcast, or our message is, is that um, learning never stops uh, and success comes in many different forms. Your story, and that's why we like to have people like you on the show and lots of diverse types of people to show that all these stories are completely different, but they found their success in their own way. So, uh, Zaura, if I ask you the question, um, looking back, what is, I know you've learned a lot of things, but what is what you would call that game changer learning? That thing that literally broke that ceiling 
and really took you to that next level, whether it was in the business or even for you just mentally, like personally, you're like, oh, now I see everything completely different. Definitely. Um, hiring young people, it changed me a lot. And it gives me a very good sense on what's happening in the market and would be demanded on the market in the, let's say in years, future, I'm not saying like years, but like months at least. Um, shaping myself um, and changing myself all the time, every month. Mm. Sometimes I'm changing myself too much because my team was get, gets crazy. <laughs> they were like, we need structure, we need this. And I was like, oh no, now like that, that idea wasn't, uh, it won't be implemented <laughs> because it's just outdated. Um, the, 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 I would say one of the key things that keeps me on the market and, uh, and let's say I wouldn't be modest, but we, I, I would say we're one of the best media companies in Kazakhstan, uh, and not only in Central Asia, there is like Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and not only because we are trying to do things that are needed to people. Mm. They need support. They need at, I mean, good content and they need information and they need this checked information, quality check. So we are knowing, we're trying to know our audience where very well. So, and of course, everyone is saying is that you have to know your people, who mm. you are selling. Of course, you have to know this. And, um, and again, we're bringing young blood all the time. And this is what makes me successful as a entrepreneur, as a manager of the company. Also, uh, I think my international background gives me this opportunity and I'm trying to force myself all the time to meet new people, mm -hmm. to challenge myself. And sometimes it's hard, but uh, we have to do that because we want to be uh, media without borders, we call ourselves. We don't have any borders, just borders in our head, heads maybe, mm -hmm. but um, uh, we want to be um, engaged in every social aspect that is happening there in my country and yeah. not only. Uh, let's say, I haven't mentioned before, but BBC, CNN, they take even stories from the step most of the time, because as I said, we're bringing new faces to the market, mm. new people, which is also good. That's, that gives us, let's say, not only credibility, but also this uh, uh, game cha changer thing yeah yeah we're changing the market through this those new people and new stories so uh i'm sorry for giving you this long long answer <laughs> no, but at all. i think um every listener who is listening to us now is that has to understand that uh okay young people are great <laughs> but also is that you have you have to be not just trendy but also very um, sensitive uh, when it comes to your cu customers. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, the decision for you to continuously hire young people, given the work that you do, is a very refreshing thing because you're always going to, I feel, because of the nature of your target, you're always going to be challenged with the new, you know, the next generation and the younger ones and so on. Um, it's an energy. Yeah, it it is. energy yeah. comes to your business yeah, yeah. when you hire young people. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I, th I think, especially in the media world, that's where a lot of attention is is going nowadays. Um, marketing is now, as we were talking, one of the most in demand jobs globally. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> right at the uh, perfect time for you know for some of us. Um, but uh, I like what you said that. <clears throat> you know, they're the ones that will be changing whatever that market or whatever this is going to look like in the next few years. And as a brand, as a company, you have to be sensitive not only to your people, but wh where that future audience might be, you know, in a couple of years' time. Uh, Zaure, I wanted to thank you so, so much for coming on the show. This has really, really been um, a lot of fun. Uh, it was really 
really cool to talk to someone who is doing something quite different um, in their in, like in in uh, Kazakhstan and in your respective country. And the mission behind it is also a very positive one. Um, so congratulations on all that. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, work with you guys, find out more, uh, let us know where can we get in touch. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the website, the step dot com, and Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. Uh, we help businesses also to okay. reach those people and uh, to create a different experience because mm. uh, we're very good at special projects, uh, huge projects, and uh, creating uh, g great campaigns. Um, but I'm not just selling myself now, but I'm just trying to say is that our business model is very adaptable to any market. Mm. And I was... Uh, they like some people they were actually asking me for franchise and opening business even here so it's just my uh, i'm holding myself back <laughs> from new market however it's a great market and, yeah. and, and to work with so yeah uh i hope it wasn't boring not at all i no. hope uh, regarding content it was in very interesting and some of the tools and secrets and you know just um i'm i'm i'm, I'm very glad thank you for um inviting me and it's a very, I would say, um, great uh, podcast, especially for those who are thinking on mm. what will be uh, very um, interesting in terms of like, what are the tools that will be interesting in, in marketing as well in the nearest future. Yeah. We'll see what AI will bring us. Yeah. In that's, social network. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> that's, been, uh, that's been a very interesting space. I feel there's... Um, an AI for everything now, for, for any project, any task, but I'm not going to let us get stuck <laughs> into the AI road. Uh, Zawada, thank, thank you so you, much. This has been a pleasure. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the AUD Podcast channel. We really hope that you enjoyed it and learned something from it. We have a lot of incredible guests lined up for you on the show, and we're so excited to bring you their inspiring stories. To stay up to date with all the latest episode releases, please make sure to like, share, follow, and subscribe to the podcast on the AUD Instagram page at AUD Dubai.